it's just, it's not my thing. Good morning, YouTube. Bah. What's up guys? I hope you're safe and healthy and happy and doing okay. Today's video is gonna be a little bit different. A lot of you guys ask me what shoes just haven't worked for me, which shoes just aren't it. So today I figured we'd do a little less of a formal video. Well, obviously you see, I haven't done my hair or anything. Oh. And the camera's falling. So let's go outside and let's chat about the shoes that just didn't work for me. This fell after three hours of wind last Monday or Tuesday in New York. Good times. Ruby, where's your ball? Okay, we're not eating sticks. All right, so I figured I would divide these into three categories. We're gonna have the shoes that I really did like that just won't make it to 50 miles. We're gonna have the shoes that I'm kind of on the fence about, and then the shoes that just did not work for me. Because there are so many shoes, I'm not gonna go through all the specs and details of every single shoe. I'm just really gonna talk about what I liked and disliked and who I think might still benefit from the shoe even though I didn't like it. So the first shoe that I really like that just won't make it to 50 miles is the New Balance Fuel Cell Propel V1. This shoe is a total steal. It's the biggest bang for your buck that you could possibly imagine. And it really is such a great daily trainer. You get so much more than what you're paying for. This is a lightweight trainer with fuel cell foam and fuel cell foam is amazing. I'd love to take it to 50 miles but I have a ton of other shoes that I think you guys would want to see instead so this might not make it to 50, but I might have version two coming soon, so we'll definitely be making some comparisons, and hopefully I'll get a little more mileage out of these. I'd recommend the Propel V1 to anybody who's looking to stay within a budget, who doesn't want to pay $150 for a running shoe, but still wants a really good quality running shoe. That's exactly what this is. The second shoe that I really liked that I won't be able to take to 50 miles is the Go Run 7 Plus. This shoe is another really lightweight daily trainer that's also not too much money. I think some places have it for like 130 bucks, but I've seen it lower in other websites, so it really depends where you look. Again, I have a ton of other shoes that I kind of want to get out of the way and get to 50 miles before this one, so it might fall to the wayside. Um, but honestly, the hyperburst midsole in the shoe is second to none. It feels amazing. It feels kind of like the Skechers Razor 3, except a little bit meatier, a little more durable for those daily mileage days. If you're a fan of Skechers, if you're a fan of hyperburst, this is a great shoe to pick up. I recommend it for anybody who is on a budget and who wants a simple, neutral daily trainer that can do longer mileage, but can also pick it up when you're feeling frisky. All right, now the last shoe in the category of shoes that I liked, but probably won't take to 50 miles is a Salming and Root 3. This one I'm kind of bummed at myself for. Uh, I did really like this shoe and in fact it was one of the shoes that my overpronation in my right foot looked the least offensive in. I thought I wasn't gonna like this shoe because it does have kind of a minimal cushioning but I ended up really enjoying it and it had just enough underfoot. I didn't feel uncomfortable. I really like what Salming is doing here. If I can get it to 50 then great but Right now, it's not looking like I'm gonna be able to take it there. If you're a person who likes a little bit more of a minimal feel underfoot and you don't like all that cushioning, you want protection, but you don't want a ton of it, maybe a little more ground feel in a lightweight package, then the Salming Enru 3 is kind of a perfect match. <sighs> Having a dog is so much fun. All right, so my next category are shoes that I'm kind of on the fence about. I'm not really sure if I'll get them to 50 miles. I'm not really sure I really like them. I'm still... My first shoe that I'm on the fence about is the Asics Gel Kayano 27. This is my first true stability shoe. I'm a person who does overpronate, especially in my right foot, but I never have really worn anything but a neutral shoe. This does correct my running stride. It makes my ankles look like they're breaking a lot less, but I did experience some knee pain, and as I've taken this shoe beyond 
uh, more miles than just the first run impressions, I still get that knee pain while I'm running and that's not something that I really want to continue. You know, a lot of people tell me, oh, you know, your, your running stride is going to uh, cause injury eventually if you don't wear the right shoes and that's fine, but none of the neutral shoes that I wear are giving me knee pain but the stability shoe is. That being said, I am kind of into the technology of the shoe, all the different elements that help to correct your stride. Uh, it's a lot less firm of a ride than I thought it was going to be. It's still firm. It's not too terrible and it's also not too stiff. There is a little bit of flex in that forefoot, which is great and you don't really see that from a ton of stability shoes. So while I'm still on the fence about it, I would recommend it to anybody who's looking for a stability shoe. The ASICS Gel Kayano is definitely a staple in the stability category. You can't really go wrong, but I just don't know if it's a winner for me. The next shoe that I'm on the fence about is the Hoka Clifton Edge. I did like this shoe in my first run impressions. I think it's fun, I think it's innovative, but as I've taken it beyond first run impressions, um, sometimes I feel like I'm wearing a boat on my foot. Because you have this like extended heel counter and all of this underfoot and it's a lot going on, it's a really wide platform, sometimes it can feel like way too much shoe. No, where's your ball? Where's your ball? There have been a couple of runs that I've worn this shoe on and uh, my legs feel tired, my feet feel heavy, and it could very well be just the day that I ran and that's why they feel kind of like that, but I, I feel like I would be naive to think that having this big huge shoe on my foot wasn't part of the problem. It's not necessarily heavy, it's just very cumbersome and it feels like the shoe is wearing me sometimes and I'm not wearing the shoe. So I don't know, I am on the fence like I said, maybe I'll take it to 50, maybe I won't. Um, but if you're a person who's looking for a max cushion shoe that's not exactly a stability shoe but does have some stability elements, this is a good option. If you think that the regular Clifton, the Clifton 7, Clifton 6 is too soft, then this is a little bit more firm than that. But you still do get that soft max kush vibe however if you were to ask me if i would pick the clifton 7 or the clifton edge it would be the 7 every time this is what i have to do to keep her busy so she doesn't eat tons of sticks and the last shoe in the category of shoes that i'm on the fence about is the brooks ghost 13. i do really like this shoe i think it's a great option for people who just want a reliable daily trainer that can go long distance. That being said, I think there are more exciting shoes on the market in this class, like the Ride 13, like the Pegasus 37, like the Clifton 7. So because I have all these other shoes to review and ones in this class that are just more exciting, I, I don't think that I'm gonna take this all the way. Again, this is a really reliable daily trainer and I would highly recommend it to somebody just looking for a good shoe that's just gonna work. But when it comes to Brooks, I think they need to really start doing some more in terms of their foam. It's kind of outdated, it's not exciting. It's a good choice, but it just wouldn't be my first choice. Now for the moment you've all been waiting for, the shoes that I am not taking to 50 miles that I just do not like. And one of them I haven't even reviewed on the channel, but I'm going to talk about it anyway. The first one is the Brooks Hyperion Tempo. All the other reviewers that I've seen on YouTube really like this shoe, so I kind of feel maybe like I'm doing something wrong here, but uh, it's just not it for me. Really, my biggest issue with this shoe is the midsole. It feels kind of lifeless to me. It's firm. I don't feel that response and that bounce that other people say that they experience. I wish I did because I think it's a beautiful looking shoe. Ruby. Where's your ball? Where's your ball? I don't know. We just don't agree. It's not my favorite. I'm not taking it to 50 miles. If you're a person who wants a lightweight kind of tempo day shoe uh, that doesn't have any kind of plate, not a nylon plate, not a carbon plate, then this might be a good option. But for, I think it's like $160, I'm pretty sure. I'd have to, I have to check that. But for that much money, you can get such a better shoe. All right, the next shoe on my list for shoes I will not be taking to 50 miles is the ASICS EVO RIDE. I think I'm also one of the few reviewers who didn't like this shoe from what I can see online. Um, I wanted to like this shoe and I don't really hate it. I've had some good runs in it, but for the most part, it's just way too firm for me. I don't like the laces, they're too thin. 
the tongue is incredibly padded. I mean, look at this. This looks like a 90s basketball shoe to me. And we're just using regular flight foam here. There's nothing special to it. It's not flight foam blast. It's just kind of boring, firm. If you're a person who wants a firmer Tempo Day shoe and likes a firm, solid ride, then this is a good shoe for you. I just don't really like that kind of thing, so that's why it didn't work for me. It's a beautiful color though. This is a nice colorway, white and gold. Very clean looking. All right, so the last shoe on my list of shoes that I absolutely will not take to 50 miles. In fact, I didn't even review this shoe because I just didn't like it that much, is the Brooks Levitate 4. Basically, I got this shoe as a possible shoe to review. I took it out for one run and I came back with bloody toes, blisters, and just an overall disappointment with this midsole. This knit upper hugs your foot way too tight, way too tight, and it's not a sizing issue. This is my size. And as for the midsole, Brooks is using DNA Amp here, um, and I saw an ad the other day on like Instagram or something like that that said something about DNA Amp. It said, get back the effort that you put in and i don't agree with that i did not get back the effort that i put in basically this shoe compressed and i felt no resilience no bounce back no response from the midsole at all really maybe a little bit but not enough not enough to justify getting my toes all cut up from the top of this upper i wish i could say that i would recommend this shoe to somebody but for $150, there's just so many other shoes that you could get, and uh, I would not recommend it to anybody, really. So this won't even be getting a review on the channel. Won't be getting much anything except this video right here telling you why it's not for me. Well guys, those are all the shoes. If you think I'm full of it and you want to get these shoes anyway, I'll try to link as many as I can down below. These are affiliate links with Running Warehouse, but that doesn't mean much for you. It just helps out my channel so I can try these shoes and hopefully like some of them or most of them or all of them well guys that kind of concludes this video if you enjoyed it please like it down below and subscribe and when you're done with all that hit the notifications bell down below so you can find out every time i upload a new video Yeesh. i have another video for you guys next week or sunday really in the meantime get out there get on the grind and don't forget to run like heller see you next time we're not eating sticks Thank you. Thank you for your cooperation. What's Ruby doing? No, where's your ball? Ruby, 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 Ruby.